In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a SaaS data model. It's one of the most common questions I get. You know, what data should you track, how to track it, how you define it. We'll do all that. So I'll show you a few things, show you a couple of documents that you can use, uh, how I will actually go through it when I work with clients and how to take all of this into your own company. Let's jump right in. I'm always being asked about uh, tracking plans and templates and you know what data should you be tracking for a tool like Mixpanel or Amplitude. Maybe you have a custom data warehouse, what data should be going there? So this is all what I would build upon a, a data model. Uh, and we'll look at it from the perspective of a SaaS company. Uh, so let's say a software company, maybe B2B, maybe consumer SaaS. Uh, the ideas are very similar. And I'll show you the process, show you some of the few ideas that you have to keep in mind, and then give you some resources that you can take and start using within your own team. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Ruben, and I'm a data strategist at Practical Analytics. I have worked now with 75 plus companies and helped them uh, from the beginning stage of a strategy all the way down to determining what insights your data is generating and how to actually use those insights to make better decisions. So this will be a short video, a bit of a preview of one of the things that tends to come up quite a bit in my client work and that I know is a big pain point for a lot of companies. So let me jump in into my computer here and I'll switch the screen so you can see. And what we have here is uh, what's commonly referred as a tracking plan or a tracking template. Uh, this is really a spreadsheet. You can do it, I guess, in a Google Doc. I see in software uh, products that can do this. The format doesn't really matter. Uh, the point of document like this one is for us to plan what events uh, and what data we want to track. So for example, you'll see here uh, that we're talking about events, event properties, user properties. If you look at your product, uh, let's say your, your software app, you can really break it down into fundamental steps. Uh, and those will become events. And that's what we want to start by tracking. Now you might have other data sources, uh, maybe more unstructured data, maybe user generated data. That's fine. That's, you know, that's a different purpose. You can combine that, but this is structured data and this is what will really be useful to your product team, to your marketing team, and really to understand the performance of the product. So we have a, a few columns here and, and this plan in particular uh, is designed for segment.com. Uh, so you see some of the language, but again, the, the terminology is very consistent across different providers. So almost everyone using events, and event properties and user properties or traits. And this, this document can fit multiple things. Now, I wanna actually walk you through it and show you what I would do if I was working on a specific product. Whenever I, I take a product, and let's take something like Zoom, uh, which you know a lot of us use on a regular basis now, I, will, I really wanna need to become familiar with the product. I don't know the product when I come into a company, naturally. So I wanna understand what are some of the main things the product has. So I'll always start just like a customer. So I'll go to the website and I'll start to browse around, you know, what, what would a customer do? You know, the website has some basic things like a, the marketing website I'm talking about here. There's page views, maybe there's call to actions we want to track, but let's start in the product itself. Now I do have uh, a temporary email I want to use here so we can sort of see this process. So we'll sign up. So the very first thing now is a user submitting this form. I might call the sign up and, you know, under the information, I want to track the email that the user is passing. So if we go back here, what we're really seeing is, oh yeah, we have an event called sign up. When the user signs up for an account, let's say on the home page. In this case, uh, I'm authenticated via email. There might be other authentication types. When does happen? And I'm gonna track some information like the email. I don't have the first name and last name yet. And maybe the ID of the user. This will be the product ID. So now in my second step, I'm being asked for uh, my date of birth. Let me enter that here. Make sure I am over some number that Zoom is looking for. And it's telling me that data will not be stored. So I'm not gonna actually, not, not actually gonna track this. Okay, so I'm confirming my email. Okay, so now we get confirmation email. But now we have three uh, steps or three events so far. We had a sign up. We might have an event called uh, date verification. And then we might have an event called uh, email verification. That, that's sort of what that, that third step was, where we simply verify what was the email that we were using. And again, we don't have to, you know, for the date, we don't have to actually pass the actual date the user passed. We just want to know the action. So we can then build funnels of it. We can then build an onboarding funnel or a sign up funnel. And we can say, this is when the user first entered the email. This is when the user verified their date. We don't know what the date is, that's fine, but we know when they actually did it and this is when they verify the email. So now let's see if we can go a little bit deeper into the product. Here's the uh, activate Zoom email, click on this. And now we're gonna get uh, a fourth event here. 
Now we activate the account. So we're getting some question here. Uh, I am not signing up on behalf of a school. Great. Now we can enter some information here. Uh, let's do this. Let's see if I get that right twice. Great, so let's stop here again. So now we saw maybe three more events here, right? So now we may have, uh, let's take this empty space. You know, we had maybe a, an event called activate account when the user clicks the email link and they activate their account and we may pass on email properties there. Uh, then we had the, the school questions. Uh, that might just be, you know, a school verification or something. Uh, and that, you know, that might just be a value yes or no. And then we had the personal information. This might actually be actually the actual sign up, uh, but this is when we pass the first name and the last name and the email and so on. So those things we can add as a, as a third point here. Uh, let's call it, you know, personal information. Again, you can choose whatever event names make sense. You wanna make them logical. Uh, so you don't wanna make them too cryptic. Uh, I've seen things like, you know, sign up, X, Y, C, C, and I don't know, maybe that makes sense to your company. In general, you wanna make them relatively straightforward. So sign up, activate account, school verification. Anyone within the Zoom product team that touches this product could see that and say, oh yeah, school verification. Yes, that's when we ask them if they're signing up on behalf of a school. I get that. So let's keep going here. We have a, a capture verification. Uh, we're asking to invite people. Again, this, this could be an invite uh, event and we may put how many users they invited. We may not put the actual e emails, but we just say, you know, they invited one user, two, three, maybe zero. Maybe they even skipped a step. They actively skipped a step, as I'm gonna do right now. And then it's asking to, to build up a, a test of a meeting. So I'll stop here. You can see that this effectively continues on. And what you wanna do is you wanna fill this plan in whatever format you have it. And you simply add all the possible actions that users can take. They create an account, they verify it, they provide personal information. In the case of Zoom, I'm gonna have to go and you know, download a software. I'm gonna have to log in into the software, whether it's on Mac or Windows or iPhone or Android. I'm gonna have to add some billing, whatever it is. And at the end, you're gonna have 20, 30, 40, 50 uh, events or lines here. And this is what you work on. So now when you have it on paper, now you can edit it, you can, you can tweak it, you can prioritize it. You might say, you know what? We don't need every single thing, which you don't but we do need this first 10 events. You know, we really care about the sign up funnel right now and that's what we need to track. So we're gonna start by tracking the first 10 sign up events and we're gonna fetch them out. You might realize that, you know, you wanna prefix them like this, for example. You know, you wanna, you know, really call them out that this, this is actually happening during the onboarding. Uh, you might combine them. You might realize, you know what, this event and that event is the same thing. Uh, for example, you might have an event called like this. You might have a download Mac app, download, Windows app, and you realize that, you know what, these this two events are, are very similar. Uh, let's just instead call it download app, and then we'll have a app type Mac or Windows or iPhone or something, right? iOS, I guess, it might make it better sense here, not iPhone, iOS. So all those kind of edits and tweaks you can make on the spreadsheet itself, and then you can take this to your development team and get it implemented. And that is all I have for today. So very quick preview as to how you build a data model. It's not complex. Don't complicate it. Simply go through it as a regular customer would. Make note of the potential events, edit them in a, a spreadsheet or a document or some kind of format before you code them. And then you then you go and actually go implement them. And then you're gonna add over time. You know, you're gonna iterate, you're gonna add missing things. You're gonna realize, you know what, we were missing this one event property, can we add it? The point here is to get started, to do it quickly, and to do it right from the beginning. If you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure to subscribe. Uh, there's a subscribe and like button somewhere on the page. There's also a link for the growth needle. This is my weekly newsletter. It has tips like this. Some things only go out to just a newsletter. Uh, so I think you enjoy that. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments. I always love to hear what people are saying and, and what things are popping up after you watch uh, my videos. Talk soon.